Hello? In this video we will explore one-sided limits. Let's have a look at the first one. We are looking for a limit at 2 from the right, from some expression, so we apply the usual approach. We take number 2 and substitute. Let's see. We get 1 over sine, and now when we take 2 and put it here for x, we get 6 minus 6, which is 0. So it's 1 divided by sine of 0. And sine of 0 is 0. We got 1 divided by 0, and that's an invitation to inquire about the type of the 0. Is it a positive 0, negative 0? We will see. Where do I get this information? Well, we know that 2 is a one-sided limit. We go 2 from the right. And hopefully this information will somehow go all the way through to this place. How do we get it there? Well, there are essentially three approaches. One of them is intuitive, and that's something that I use a lot. How does it go? Okay. When I'm approaching 2 from the right, it means I'm taking x, which is near 2, but a little bit larger. Now, I take a number which is a little bit larger than 2, I multiply it by 3, I get something which is a little bit larger than 6. And then when I subtract it from 6, it becomes a negative number. So I suspect that this 0 here is a negative 0. So it's the first approach, intuitive. Let's have a look at the second approach. You can call it a graphical approach. I have a fairly good idea about the shape of the function 6 minus 3x. That's just a straight line. It goes through 6 over here and through 2 over here. So that's the graph of that function. Now, when I'm approaching 2 from the right, I'm taking numbers here to the right of 2. And when I look at the graph, that's the place where the values are. But we actually see them on the y-axis. We see them over here. That's the values. As we approach number 2 with x, the values approach number 0, and they approach from below, from negative numbers. So indeed, this 0 is a negative 0. So that was the second approach. Now let's try the third approach, which is algebraic. Okay? We have information. When x approaches 2 from the right, it means that x is larger than 2. Now, I would like to use this information to learn about 6 minus 3x. So let's play with it. I multiply this inequality by negative 3. And when I do it, I get negative 3x is less than, I have to switch, negative 6. Now I add 6 to both sides. And let's see what I get. 6 minus 3x is less than 0. That's the expression I'm investigating, and I can see that as I'm approaching 2 from the right, this expression is negative. So indeed, this 0 is negative. We have double confirmation, we are slowly beginning to believe it. Okay, now we have to figure out what's the sign of negative 0. Again, well, actually algebra is pretty tricky here, so let's try just the picture. Here's a little bit of the sign function. We all know the graph. And we are approaching the origin from the left. So our x is, or perhaps not x, because this is not x anymore. Let's call it, for instance, uh, z. So we are approaching the origin from the left, like that. And we are looking at the values of the sine function. And we can see that we are approaching 0 from below. So the outcome of sine of 0 negative is negative 0. And now we are ready to conclude that the limit is actually negative infinity. That's it. OK, so let's have a look at the second example. We take 0 and we substitute. 1 over 1 minus cosine at 0. Now, cosine at 0 is just 1. And 1 minus 1 is 0. Again, we would appreciate having some information about this 0. But where do we get it? That's a two-sided limit, not one-sided limit. So there is no plus or minus information that we could pass through. Normally, I would do the following procedure. If I don't have one-sided information, I can introduce it artificially. I would consider two limits. In one limit, 
I would send x to 0 from the right, and in the other limit, I would send it there from the left. And then I would evaluate it in the usual way. I would take this information and pass it through, and with a little bit of luck, I would get some answers. Now, if these answers are the same, then that's actually the answer to the original question. And if they are different, then the original limit does not exist. That's a general procedure. But this example is actually interesting because I don't need to do it. I can derive information about this zero just from the formula itself. Let's have a look at it. I take x and I approach zero. So x is a small number, but it can be positive or negative. I don't know. Anyway, it's a small number. I put it into cosine. So, so far, no information there. When I put a small number, which is close to zero, into cosine, I get a number which is close to one, but it's always less than one. It's never larger. So this one here, it's actually a negative number one. It's a limit from the left. So it's a number which is almost one, but a little bit smaller. And when I subtract it from one, I get something small and positive. So this is a positive zero, and the answer is infinity. Can I confirm it somehow? Well, we can try algebra. When x is close to zero, but not zero, that's important. Why is it not zero? Because limit never looks exactly at the limit point. It always looks just around it. We never consider the point itself in the limit. It's in the definition. Okay? So I have a number which is close to zero, but not zero. And then cosine of x must be strictly less than 1. And now I play with this inequality in a similar way that I did over here to rearrange it, to obtain information about this expression. So I multiply this by negative 1, and so on. I play with it, and I get that 1 minus cosine of x, and the multiplication switches the direction, and there will be 0 here. And I can see that the denominator is actually positive, so it's 0 plus. You can also see this if you play with the graph of cosine. As you are approaching the origin, either from the left or from the right, it doesn't make really any difference, the cosine function approaches number one over here, and it always approaches it from below, from numbers which are smaller than one over here. So this one here should have a negative mark next to it. OK, so that was the second example. Let's move to the third one. I take number 3 and I substitute here and I get 9 minus 9. So it's logarithm of 0. Which is nonsense, of course. So we need some information about one-sidedness of this 0. And if we had 0 minus, if it were a negative 0, then this whole expression would be nonsensical. This cannot be done like that. So we are actually hoping that the author of this question didn't make a mistake, and that we get 0 plus. And we find this in our limit algebra. Well, how do we get this information? Let's try the intuitive approach. I have a number which is slightly larger than 3. If I square it, I get something which is slightly larger than 9. And if I take a number which is slightly larger than 3 and multiply it by 3, I get something which is slightly larger than 9. Now, this is interesting. If I subtract, I get 0. That fits. But I have something which is a little bit larger, minus something which is a little bit larger than 9. What happens? Well, it depends on the quality of those pluses here, so to speak. And I don't have this information. When I say a little bit larger, I don't really know by how much. So I cannot reasonably compare these two. I cannot really derive information that I need just by intuitive reasoning. So, as I said, this is my favorite way of doing it, intuitively. That's the way I go about it most of the time. But in this particular example, it actually fails. So I have to go to pictures, or I have to go to algebra. Let's try pictures. x squared minus 3x. What's the graph? It's a parabola, upwards-oriented parabola. So let's identify roots. One of them is 0. And the other one is 3, so it looks like this. 
That's the picture. Now we are approaching three from the right. So we are going this way. And the values of the parabola go down to zero, which makes sense, that fits. And they go there from the positive part. So it's zero plus. <sighs> yeah, it works. Now we can write the answer. How do we get it from algebra? That's actually a little bit tricky. If we start with inequality x larger than 3, uh, one has to be experienced quite a lot to get some information about x squared minus 3x. It's a little bit easier to start from the other end. I look at x squared minus 3x, and I factor out, and I look at the expression x times x minus 3. Now, what happens if x actually approaches 3 from the right? Well, x goes to 3, that's obvious. And x minus 3 actually tends to a positive 0. A positive 0 multiplied by a positive number yields a positive 0. So that's justification or confirmation that this positive 0 is really right. Okay? So, that's it. For this little bonus video, we saw some approaches that work with one-sided limits, and hopefully next time you meet them, you'll be able to somehow find a way around them. See you.